Hello and welcome to the next episode of Cyber Potato where we'll be building our first React application. So we left off with this. It's not much, but at least you should know how we'll be styling our app and a little bit about how ES6 uh, modules, exports, and imports work. Now let's get to it. Let me show you the uh, API that we'll be using, and it's a deck of cards API. Okay, so. Um, this is the API that lets you get the images and information about cards in the deck. You can shuffle it, you can create a new deck, and then you can draw the cards from that deck. And we will be um, building a simple game for our user to we'll show him a card and his task will be to guess uh, whether the next card will has a higher uh, number, the higher mark or, or lower mark. Okay, and uh, we will uh, compare them and display some kind of information for, for our user to say, hey, yeah, you guessed it right or oh no, you were wrong again. Okay. And uh, what is uh, great about this API is it's rather, it's free. Hey, free stuff, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's rather easy to use. You can just use uh, free methods uh, and everything is done by get request. Uh, so uh, it should be rather easy and fun, but I had some problems with it. Okay, uh, so we'll be performing the um, HTTP asynchronous request, AJAX request to connect to the API. And the browser itself has um, the fetch uh, function implemented that you can use to perform those requests. But to be honest, I don't really like fetch. I don't think it's the best way to go when you're performing the asynchronous uh, request. And I'll and you, we together will be using Axios library. Okay, so we'll be using this library uh, to perform the request. It's promise based. It's much more configurable um, and uh, I know it better. I like it better. Let's let's try using it. It has a pretty good documentation and I can tell that the guy who built it really cares about this library and is still working on some pull requests and issues and so forth and so on. Okay. Uh, whoa. Now we're fine. So uh, let's add it. Oh, few things about the terminal in the in the VS Code. You can access it by going to by going to terminal, new terminal. Uh, then you can type like in you know terminal. Uh, but if you'd like to have two terminal windows um, next to each other, and I tend to do it because one is always occupied running our development server. You can click here, split terminal to have two windows next to each other. Okay, I will start our uh, fantastic server and I will also add Axios to our project. Can add Axios, Axios, something like that. Okay, and as you can tell, 
that is also being updated is our package.json file. The libraries, the packages that we're adding from npm are being listed here. And it's great because um, once you push your project to GitHub to share it with another developer, he can just download it, run yarn, and it will install and fetch every single package that is listed here. So he doesn't have to specify and add the dependencies by hand because they're all listed in package JSON file. Okay, uh, so to integrate with our API, we will need to change stuff a little bit. Okay, let me see. We have layout here. So I assume I will add another component. I will call it card game board JS. Okay. Always I have to import React. Nothing new here. And this is going to be a stateful component. So I will create class. Okay. Yeah, I know that currently React has hooks, but we'll use them in another next project. Now I'd like to show you the good old way for using React because uh, this has been the way for, the, for years and most of the resources on the web are still using this old class stateful approach. So it's gonna be care game board and this extends react component okay all right and what is great here is i can define state as a static property and i can define component did mount as an arrow class and i have to render something Okay, and because I believe that the main thing in uh, my card game board module is the card game board component, and there's a policy saying that you should have one component by a uh, per file, I will do export default because actually it's the main thing in my module card game board, and then I can use it here it's default so i don't do curly braces but say card game board or you can rename it whatever you want and here i will say card game board is it working yes because there's something on our screen all right okay so the best place to fetch data for components for the project is actually component did mount because uh, then you are sure that component is in place and is ready to render the data uh, to use the data from the internet to build the components so how do you want to approach that i believe that um all the code regarding the API and connecting to it should live in a separate file. So let's do just that. I'll create um, APA.js file, okay? And this file, this module will be using access. So I'll import access from access, okay? And uh, here is a nice thing. You can create your own object describing um, the API that you're connect connecting to 
uh, and it's just to really keep it dry and don't uh, you don't need to repeat yourself if you configure this uh, project correctly what i mean by that uh, for example one of the properties is base url it's axios create to create the instance and there's the base url uh, and it's really nice because as you can tell, if I go to the API documentation, there's this part uh, ending with deck, which is the same for each and every single call. So this is my base URL, the URL that has to be repeated for uh, every request. So I'll do HTTPS. This is deck, deck of cards, API com slash API slash deck slash. Okay, and I will create the function to create new deck and draw the first card from it. Okay. So let me call it create create deck and draw. Yeah. Create deck and draw. Okay. This is gonna be async function because we'll be connecting to the API. So we have to work with promises because it's an asynchronous operation because we don't know how long it will take, but we'd like to be informed when it does. So I'm gonna write await api get. Uh, now we'd like to create new deck and return it shuffled. So the cards won't be in order because what is the point of guessing? What is the point of our game we, if we don't have it shuffled? New shuffle, okay? And as you can see here, I can add some parameters to my request. Uh, these are query parameters that you add to the URL and they work uh, like um, additional information to our request uh, sometimes for sorting sometimes for filtering here we are specifying uh, the number of decks that we'd like to create which is one and i could add it here just fine deck count equals one but there's a better way to not Miggle our string here too much. I can specify a config here configuration for my request and one of the entries here one of the properties is params Which I can specify as an object here and it's gonna be um, It's gonna be added to my request string with all the proper uh, signs that has to be added so the question mark at the SOAR, the ampersand in between the params. It's really cool. Okay. And how to actually um, get the data? If we were to use path, we would have to say then data, data, JSON. This is how the uh, fetch is working. And I don't want any of that because I can just say, response equals this okay and i can actually use it if i export it oh also i can do name exports like this export create deck and draw it's the same okay so we exported it it's this and this is very much the same okay um it doesn't really matter, but I tend to export right here. And let's just add console with the 
will you pass object that we get okay so how to use it uh, I have to import that function that I'd like to call so import from API and here it's create deck and row okay and I can await uh, oh yeah let me just yeah I can await it here so await create deck and row okay and the problem is I'm using await here but the function itself isn't asynchronous how to fix that? Simply, I specify async here. I can mark component mount async. So it's really great. Okay, let's check this out. It's working. Let's go to the console. Okay, I got something. It's an object. So the response I'm getting from an access is an object. And as you can tell, there are many things here. There is HTTP status, 200 is okay, 200 is good. Status text, well, it could be okay, but I know by the status number that it is fine. The HTML uh, request object underneath it because, um, because the old way of making the request uh, was using the XML HTTP request interface and the access is built on top of that instead on top of fetch. There are headers from the response saying that the return data is in JSON format. The configuration, the method is get, the transfer, transformations, not important right now, but I'm really interested in making it bigger and showing you data. So here I have uh, information that are actually returned by my API. So the deck ID, uh, the remaining cards in the deck, is it shuffled and was the request successful? Okay, that's great. So maybe instead of using everything here, I would like to use the data here okay and now I have my data all right and since we've been going about 17 minutes now I believe this is a good place to stop I see you in the next episode bye